Hello folks, this is Ayatan Ajha from InspireToRise.com and let's talk about the Oppo F3. This smartphone comes with a 5.5 inch Full HD display with 2.5D curved glass and Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection. It features a metallic body and on the left hand side we have the volume rocker, on the bottom we have the micro USB port, speaker, grill and the 3.5mm jack. It has a triple slot card tray which means that you have a dedicated micro SD card slot along with two dual SIM slots and that is something that I personally like. On the front we have two dual selfie cameras and you also have the fingerprint sensor which is a non-clickable button. Now let's talk about what's on the inside. It comes with a MediaTek MT6750T octa-core 1.5 GHz chipset, Mali T86 MP2 GPU, 4 GB of RAM, 64 GB of internal storage and supports micro SD card up to 128 GB, has a 3200 mAh battery, it's a dual nano SIM supporting phone and it also has Color OS 3 which is based upon Android 6.0 Marshmallow. This is something that I hate that they haven't yet updated this phone to Android Nougat yet. It does have all of the sensors that you might need but I despise the fact that it's still running on Android Marshmallow. The device scored 53,345 on the Antutu benchmark which is a good score, it's above average but not exceptional by any means. It scored 60.5 frames per second on the Nina Mark 2 benchmark which is a good one, 2801 on the multi-core score and around 760 on the single core score on the Geekbench 4 benchmark. The single core is quite low, multi-core score was respectable. While playing a really heavy game like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas with all of the settings pushed to the maximum possible limits, I was able to play the game but after playing for maybe like 10 or 15 minutes or so there were few signs of jitters here and there so I would say that it is an ok performing phone but really high end gaming is still not that good on this one. The fingerprint sensor on this one was really fast and it worked every time that I used it flawlessly and that is something that I would give to Oppo that the fingerprint sensor was good. Now let's talk about the camera on this device. The front camera are two front cameras. One is the wide angle, ultra wide angle camera which is the 8 megapixel one and another is the 16 megapixel front camera. The primary camera is a 13 megapixel one with dual PDAF and f2.2 aperture though the aperture could have been a little bit wider and that would have made for better low light performance but still I believe that the cameras on Oppo smartphones are one of the best cameras out there and you can see the picture quality for yourself. Now this image is taken in the ultra mode 2x, 3x, now 4x and now 5x, 5x, 500% zoom into the original image and still the quality was there. So you can see for yourself the selfies taken from the front camera, the ultra wide selfie and all of the other shots they were really good. The color quality and clarity was excellent. The front camera shoots up to 1080p videos and they were quite detailed. The back camera also is capable of shooting only up to 1080p videos and this is something that I consider a serious drawback. All of the phones in this price segment most of them can shoot up to 4K video and this phone which is a camera centric phone still does not have 4K video so this is something that I personally dislike. Now let's test the sound quality and output of this device. There is only one speaker grill and as is the case with almost every smartphone speaker out there the bass is little lacking though the loudness is okay and the user interface for this one is a single page UI style of design and it's almost the same since a long time the color OS used by Oppo guys is stable it's smooth but the RAM taken by this OS is quite high. Pre-orders for the Oppo F3 would start from May 4th which is today and if I talk about the phone it is good at some things and the first sale would be from May 13th. The phone Oppo F3 would retail for a price of 19,990 rupees and I feel that for such a price this smartphone is definitely a little bit overpriced. It does have good features. It does have that wide selfie camera and few other features which make it a good phone but in terms of chipset used and few other things used this smartphone is still a little bit dated though it would be good for people who want a selfie centric camera centric phone but still somebody who is looking for really high performance this is not my smartphone of choice for you. You can go and buy something else which is more powerful but if you want something which works smoothly and has a really good camera interface and experience then this smartphone is the one for you. So guys this was it for this video. In case you like this one don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome detailed tech reviews like this. This is Ayatan Ajha from InspireToRise.com signing off folks. Stay inspired to rise.